Do your online shopping now. Sambole.lk The Department of Archaeology has informed the relevant parties that the Chinese joint venture project to dredge and clean up the ancient Tissa Maharama Weaver must be halted until permission for the project is granted by the Department of Archaeology. The Director General of the Department of Archaeology, Professor Anurag Manathunga, said that steps were taken to halt the project until the relevant permission is granted. As permission for the project at the Tissa Maharama Weaver was not granted from the Department of Archaeology, we took the steps to halt the project until permission is granted. If the project is to continue, they must obtain permission from the Department of Archaeology. Also, the department must conduct an assessment on the damage that could be caused to the archaeological site. So we have informed the relevant parties to halt the project until the request is submitted and permission is granted. The project to dredge and clean up the ancient Tissa Maharama Weaver in Hambantota under the Warisau Bage program was launched under the auspices of Minister Chamal Rajapaksa on the 20th of this month. Jet suction dredges have been installed at the site of the project that dredges close to 100 clear soil and mud per hour. It is believed that the Tissa Maharama Weaver was built during the reign of the King Yatala Tissa, who ruled the kingdom of Ruhuna, or his uncle, King Devanampia Tissa, who ruled the kingdom of Anuradhapura. The farmers in the area also spoke of the project to dredge and clean up the Tissa Maharama Weaver. <laughs> The dredging of this weather is being carried out in the section of the weather where the most amount of water is collected. They should dredge the area that appears in green. It is only then that the weather can hold a larger amount of water. They must dredge from here, but they are dredging from over there. This is an ancient weather. There are ruins here from our ancient civilizations that are of archaeological importance. Now this weather is being dredged. The area where the queens of these ancient civilizations bathed is said to be located close to this area. There were many stone pillars here too. But after the dredging began, these pillars are nowhere to be found. The Director General of Archaeology and the Department of Archaeology who took steps to stop these actions that could have caused irreparable damage to this site of great archaeological importance will undoubtedly receive the praise and gratitude of the nation. Although the project was temporarily halted after the intervention of the Department of Archaeology, the controversy over the sighting of individuals clad in a uniform similar to that of the Chinese military is still ongoing. What is the difference between the clothing worn by these Chinese nationals and that of the Chinese People's Liberation Army? No faction has still made an official clarification on this matter. Who are these Chinese nationals? Can a piece of clothing similar to the military uniform of a foreign country be used in Sri Lanka? No one has the right to wear a foreign military uniform and engage in any activity in our country without prior approval. There are no provisions that allow this either in international law or domestic law. Engaging in any form of activity in Sri Lanka while either appearing to be from a foreign military force or while actually being a member of a foreign military force can be cited as an insult to the independence, the sovereignty of the people of Sri Lanka. There are laws that govern military uniforms. Under these laws, even using the uniform of Sri Lankan military forces for an activity outside any official task is a punishable offence. Under such circumstances, the presence of foreign military personnel or individuals clad in a uniform of foreign military personnel can therefore be considered as a violation of domestic law because only the legitimate military in the country can wear military uniforms. Being in possession, selling or even sewing a military uniform in the country is an offence. National security is not a simple transaction with another country. National security is embedded in a supreme law of the constitution that states that Sri Lanka is a sovereign nation. Using a commercial agreement with a foreign country to compromise on the national security and sovereignty of our nation cannot be accepted under any circumstance.